Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the New York Jets wasting a draft pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention that you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just a reminder that you could also get at me on the podcast. New episodes drop every Monday. Call in, leave me a question. And this Saturday, I will be live streaming a rewatch party of the New York Jets versus the New England Patriots from the 2010 playoffs. So, okay, the New York Jets wasted a draft pick in this draft class. Otherwise, a very, very good showing from New York Jets GM Joe Douglas. But there's one pick in particular that really rubbed me the wrong way, and that is their fourth round selection, James Morgan, quarterback out of FIU. He's a 23 year old prospect who is 6'4 and 213 pounds with a big arm, but that's about it. He started out at Bowling Green, where in 2017 he had a 45.3 completion percentage. One more time 45.3. He threw for nine touchdowns and seven interceptions. That was in the MAC. He then had to transfer over to FIU, where he got a little bit better in year two in 2018. He had a 65 completion percentage, 26 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Pretty good numbers, but keep in mind what conference it is. This past year in 2019, we saw a regression. Now, I understand his wide receivers were not all that good. I get that, but these numbers don't jump off the page in any way, shape, or form. 58 completion percentage, 7.2 yards per attempt, 14 touchdowns to 5 interceptions. If you are going to draft someone out of Conference USA, especially a quarterback, they better be lighting it up. And to me, Morgan is not lighting it up whatsoever. He has a really strong arm, but he's extremely inaccurate and he struggles to go through his reads. He very much so locks into one target and is going to fire the ball in there as hard as he can. I get some of the desirable traits of the big arm and how he's tough, but this pick just makes zero sense for the New York Jets for a few reasons, and I'll tell you why. If Sam Darnold has to miss time like he did each of the last two years, he missed three games in 2018, he missed three games in 2019. There is no way in hell that this kid could come over from Conference USA and play in the NFL next year. Not a chance. The New York Jets need a legitimate backup quarterback for this year. And what they did was they took a project quarterback who maybe by 2021, best case scenario, can be a backup quarterback in this league. But right now, this guy is not someone who can play and start games in the NFL. He's someone who you have to work in slowly. They tried to do that with Bryce Petty. Didn't work. Tried to do it with Christian Hackenberg with even a higher pick in the second round. Disaster. We've seen Adam Gase fall in love with these mid-round type quarterbacks, David Fales, Luke Falk. It doesn't tend to work very often, and this seems like another example of that. I understand that he, again, I understand the arm strength. I get it. That's what everyone's going to come at me and say, oh, but he has a big arm. Okay, sure. But can he go through progressions? One of the things, like, he fires screen passes in there. He just has no sense of touch and accuracy. So I don't think he's someone who would be ready to come in in case, worst case scenario, Sam Darnold can't play for a game. The Jets needed a legitimate backup quarterback for this year. And I'm not talking about a Cam Newton. I'm not even talking about a... Andy Dalton, who just got released today, but someone who could step in and you'd feel like semi-confident that they could play at the NFL level. I'm talking guys like Joe Flacco, Cody Kessler, Matt Moore, Blake Bortles. Those are four guys right there who are what, maybe going to cost you two to four million dollars against the cap. And they're a veteran who at minimum has starting experience in this league. So if you need, God forbid, Sam Darnold has to miss a couple of games, you can go to someone who like can maybe hold the fourth down. There is no chance of Morgan holding the fourth down in 2020. Maybe he could be your long-term backup project who you flip for a third-round pick in three or four years. But I'm not really looking to do that. I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense for where the Jets are, taking a developmental quarterback with so many other needs. This team could have went edge. They could have went corner earlier. I understand they addressed corner later in the draft and then in undrafted free agency, but this was definitely a pick with some players left on the board at corner, wide receiver, edge specifically. Maybe you go interior offensive line a little bit earlier. They did that with the next pick, which I was happy with. But at that point in time, the New York Jets didn't have the luxury to take a developmental project quarterback. They didn't. They did. That's a luxury kind of pick. If you're the Kansas City Chiefs, you can get away with that. If you're a team who has a really well-built roster and good depth, you can afford to use a developmental quarterback in your system. Jets can't do it. Just flat out can't. 
So yes, I would rather pay a quarterback who you already know what he is, a backup level at two to four million dollars a year, somewhere in that range. I mean, Jameis Winston just signed for a million bucks essentially to play with the New Orleans Saints. I think you're probably going to have to pay a little bit more than that, but if you're in that two to four million dollars range, even if it's a one-year deal for Joe Flacco or Cody Kessler, let it be. You need someone in here who can play. And right now, Morgan cannot play in 2020. You are hoping he can in 2021, but even that's a risk. Let me know what you think of the draft pick down below or in the comments, all that fun stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll talk to you next time.